Hello there! How's it going? Welcome to the apocalypse of a box bird, bird box. Uh, today, I will be doing the bird box challenge! Yay! Today, we're gonna be doing a very special treat. Uh, it's gonna be a carrots and broccoli bowl, because I have no food in my house because I didn't go food shopping this weekend. Let's get right to it! Alright, so now we just gotta find the fridge. Oh, there we go, there we go. Uh, here, wait, this thing's falling off, that's cheating. Ah, what the heck? I can see everything! Carrots, carrots, carrots. Alright, so we got our carrots, right? Um, shit, they're still in a bag. I need to get a cutting board now. Um, stop slipping, stop slipping. This is great, I have one hand of use. Alright, let's the cutting board. Now I need my knife. That's good enough. Let's hope this is a good knife. And we can start cutting the... Ow! First we got It Comes at Night. Then we got A Quiet Place, and then we got this. Which, by the way, was nowhere near as good as the previous two, so if this is what Netflix was planning as a follow-up, you really fell flat. I don't even know where to start with Bird Box, because there's so many layers of things that I didn't like, but I have to acknowledge there were positives, so let's start there. First off, we get what appears to be an all-star cast. Uh, you have the classics such as Sandra Bullock, John Malkovich, Machine Go- Wait, what? Wait, hold on, wait. I had to check the script. He's acting now? Like, actually acting other than nerve acting? Okay, and you know, I have to admit, for a rapper, he's actually not too bad of an actor. Now, that's not to say he can carry a movie as a, as a, you know, a uh, protagonist, star actor, the lead role, but put him in, like, a small supporting role, and he actually- isn't terrible, you know? So props to him. Sandra Bullock played the protagonist Mallory, you'll see right there, uh, and actually did like a pretty decent job getting the sense of the character and playing a consistent version of that character. John Malkovich was used for some bullshit political agenda, which I will certainly touch on later, uh, which I just thought was ridiculous. Little Rel Howery was, I thought, not used as good as he could have been, uh, which I can say about all of the things I've seen him in after Get Out. And then there was Trevante Rhodes, who actually put a pretty good performance together. He played this, like, uh, good guy, Mr. Perfect Survivor character, but he did a good job. But I'm starting to find this trend where movies that are hyped up, but end up being decent to bad and not fulfilling their full potential, have this trend of, like, these critics come out and they start saying, Oh, this lead character was amazing, or this star who played the protagonist was incredible. And that becomes, like, the huge defense of the movie. I'm starting to sense already that this is what's happening with Bird Box. Sandra Bullock was good. Not fantastic, not amazing, she was good. But she didn't carry the movie or anything, otherwise I would have loved it. Uh, she, you know, she did... She did her job. She did Sandra Bullock, you know? Y you knew what you were going to get out of her. But that doesn't mean that she carried the movie to make it fantastic and Sandra Bullock f makes everything else forgivable in the movie. No. What did turn out good, however, was the lore built around the story of Bird Box. The creatures felt unique and original and um, felt immersive to the environment around them. We believed it was an apocalypse and the rules around how the creatures worked were consistent throughout the whole movie. I absolutely loved how they introduced people who weren't affected by seeing the creatures and actually liked to see them. Uh, they liked to look. 
Uh, I actually started theorizing about how psychopaths or sociopaths or whatever paths would, would you know, feel or see when they looked at these creatures. Fuck me, I should have watched that Shane Dawson, Jake Paul documentary. It's beautiful! It's beautiful! Take your blindfold off! Take your blindfold off! It was really interesting to see how sociopaths? Is it sociopaths? How sociopaths would react to uh, seeing these creatures as, you know, beautiful instead of how normal people would be afraid of them and, like, actually be driven to kill themselves. And that's another thing we should talk about for a second. All the scenes where these people were killing themselves, I don't know if I'm a psycho, but they were funny. <laughs> Like, I just found it hilarious, these scenes where people would just walk into a fire, like, I don't know if I'm a complete sociopath- so Fuck! I don't know if I'm a complete sociopath, but these death scenes were just- I couldn't take them seriously. You know this movie's being compared to A Quiet Place a lot, but I think there's one other movie it has a lot more in common with. movie's The Happening, guys. It's The Happening all over again. The only difference with Bird Box is that it doesn't carry the same amount of charm that The Happening did. It wasn't bad in all the best ways, and you couldn't laugh at it. This movie is actually something you have to take seriously. The Happening was just a disaster, and Bird Box isn't a disaster. There's still things about it that are good, so you can't really laugh at it. And that's, I think, what kind of ruins the movie for me, is that I couldn't sit back and laugh at the movie other than like the ridiculous death scenes that <laughs> I would honestly rather be amazed by a complete disaster than be bored by like a decently put together movie that's not really all that great. So there we have it. Decent acting paired with a good lore, good editing, and a pretty good cinematography make the movie at least decent to look at. But with this movie, I have so many issues. Like with these fucking kids! These two kids, who are way too young to be acting, by the way, are just in and out of the movie constantly like they're some freaking placeholder. Now, I've seen kid actors be good in certain movies, but these two kids just stand there throughout the movie with these freaking bug eyes like they have no idea what's going on. They don't even have names either. Mother of the Year Mallory decided to name them boy and girl. Jesus Christ. <laughs> See what I mean by this literally being the happening? <laughs> like, how am I supposed to not laugh at this? This is ridiculous! Great. Now we can all starve here in the maternity ward. This is probably the part of the movie that pissed me off the most, is what they did with John Malkovich's character. They take a talented actor and make him the most stereotypical dick character that you could possibly make him for really no apparent reason other than to push a political agenda. They don't say it outright in the movie, but he's very clearly a stereotypical Republican. Just look at the hints. He's suing his neighbor, who's a gay male. He's an asshole. He's selfish. He's a rich, old, white man. And m most obviously, he says this. I would like to take this opportunity to make a toast to all of us because all of us collectively are making the end of the world great again! Yeah! Oh my fucking god! This is the most cringe line I've heard in a movie in a very long time. I was so close to stopping my watch through of the movie entirely, but you know, I decided to just take a break and then come back later to finish up, and thankfully that never happened again. I'm here and she's gone, and you know why that is? Because in the end, there are only two types of people, the assholes and the dead. Way, great job to make it obvious, guys. 10 out of 10, 10 out of 10. Well, if all you guys are going, then I, I can come too. You know, why don't 
Why don't I go on the first run, and then you can go on the second one? Shockingly enough, they managed to make a character that's even more unbearable than Mallory or uh, John Malkovich's character entirely. Big fucking surprise! It's this girl who's that other pregnant woman in the movie. You ever have that member of a team or like just a friend that you know that only exists to really be a liability or an annoyance? Yeah, that's Olivia. So, um, have you thought about names yet? No, not, not yet. How about you? Well, if it's a girl, we wanted to name her like Ariel or Jasmine. I mean... <laughs> I would love to name her Cinderella and just call her Ella. Oh no, she's one of those two? Oh God, please no! I'm a 30 year old, but I still love Disney movies and Disney music and I like watching Netflix and eating pizza and I want to be a little Disney princess. Please love <laughs> I'm sorry, but I've just met so many people in my life like this that I find them really unbearable and I'm just happy this character didn't get more screen time because I probably wouldn't have been able to finish the movie. And then she has the complete audacity to like try and force Mallory into promising to look after her baby in case she dies and Mallory agrees and I'm just like, really? Do you have any like integrity or shame like at all? If something happens to me, I want you to take care of my baby, okay? No, no, please. It's, it's, it's your, it's your baby. Me. No. Promise me. Nothing is going to happen please. to you. It's your baby. Promise me. Nothing. Please. Nothing. Promise me. I'm shocked Mallory put up with her. It didn't seem like her to even handle that. But it's at this point that the movie actually starts to get bearable. Um, the cutscenes between the past and the present start to slow down and we get like a sense of why the past matters. The tension in the movie really starts to build as Mallory and the kids take on this trek down the river to reach this supposed sanctuary that they don't know if it exists or not. This part is the actual good part of the movie. And I have to say the ending itself was kind of beautiful. Like I can't deny that. Mallory finally admits her love for her kids and actually gives them names. And then they brought some random doctor character in as a recurring character uh, from the beginning, now she's at the end, but it didn't really do anything for me because I didn't care about that doctor character in the beginning, so why did you feel the need to bring her back? It didn't make sense. So, you've got the movie, right? But then, you've got all these fucking videos on YouTube and shit. What is this shit? These fucking videos, let me tell you. The Bird Box Challenge, What? what is that? What even is that? Who thought of this idea? Why is this a thing? Let's put on blindfolds and mow our lawn and drive down the, the interstate. That's such a great idea. Wow. <laughs> Couldn't possibly fucking go wrong at all. You know, maybe I'm being like unreasonable. Maybe I need to actually like, look how many views this is getting. This is like, well, that's Good Morning America. 115K views. Um, 163k views, fuck me, 146k views. I need to be cashing in on this, guys. I can make it like cooking during the Bird Box Challenge, or driving a Lamborghini during the Bird Box Challenge, or smoking crack during the Bird Box Challenge. I think the only Bird Box Challenge video I liked was probably the Rooster Teeth one, because, well, it's Rooster Teeth. They always are going to entertain me. That is my take on Bird Box. I hope you enjoyed this review. Uh, I finally got one out after a while, I know. Um, I've been like starting work, so I don't know, like with my schedule, I've been trying to find like when I would start. Turns out I had the last three weeks to myself to do stuff, so fuck me, am I right? In terms of recommending this movie, I'd say it's like decent. Like it's not good or bad. Um, I didn't like it, but I can see how someone might like it, so Watch at your own risk. That's it though for this review and I will see you in the next episode of Nonsensical Cinemas. Bye.